Hi, my name is Ranjit Dharmasiri and I am a principal engineer in safety hardware design at ABB Robotics. Uh, today I will present Omnico V250 XT safety system. Let's get started. This block diagram provides an overview of the safety system of the Omnico V250 XT controller. The main safety controller, DSQC1015, is in the main computing module. It provides four dual channel discrete safety inputs and one dual channel discrete safety output. The safe IOs are used to implement TPU safety functions and customer safety interfaces, including protective stop input, external emergency stop input, and emergency stop status output. The DSQC 1015, the main safety controller, also provides support for the safe field buses. This includes ProfiSafe and SIF safety safe protocols over the Ethernet and EtherCAT FSOE protocol. The lower part of the block diagram shows the drive chain. It includes the DSQC 3070 power module and drive modules. The DSQC 3062 is a six axis drive module. The DSQC 3065 is a single axis drive module. The power module generates DC bus power to the drive modules, including dual channel safety switches to turn on and off the DC bus power to the drive modules. Each drive module has a safety controller that communicates with the main safety controller over the EtherCAT. The main task of the drive module safety controller is to generate the DC bus control signals and on and off controlling of the 24 volt brake power. Here is a detailed view of the dual channel safety signal interface. The DSQC 3037 provides necessary isolation and filtering since those safety signals are routed outside the control cabinet. Two dual channel safety inputs are used with TPU safety functions, the e-stop button and enable switches. The other two inputs are allocated for protective stop input and external e-stop input. It is possible to configure the protective stop input as either automatic stop or general stop via robot studio. You can also configure the type of the stop category as either category 0 or category 1 for all safety inputs through Robot Studio. The only dual channel safety output is used as e-stop status output. Now let's go into more detail about the physical location and connectivity of the protective stop and e-stop inputs. They are located on the DSQC 3037 signal exchange proxy module connector X14. The signals are designed as current loops, meaning that the safety controller can detect a make or break in the signal loop current flow. The break of the current loop is identified as an activation of the connected safety switch. You can find the status indicators near the connector. A jumper plug is supplied with the controller providing jumper connections as shown in the circuit diagram. It is important to keep the input current loops are in conduction mode when they are unused. The e-stop buttons and protective stop switches can be connected in different ways. You can use the 24 volt supply power from DSQC 3037 as shown here. It is important to have antivalent signal loops to achieve the highest possible diagnostic coverage. For example, channel 1 of the switch can be connected to the 24 volt rail, channel 2 of the switch needs to be connected to the 0 volt rail, otherwise you can make the connection in the opposite way. You can also feed the e-stop external and protective stop inputs from external 24 volt power supplies. Here. It is important to install the safety switches on the opposite DC voltage rails as described earlier. You will find the e-stop status outputs at X15 connector. It indicates the status of TPU e-stop button, 
any connected e-stop buttons on the e-stop external input and e-stop through safe field buses. It is a 24 volt discrete signal output and as a 20 volt when any connected e-stop function is activated. I hope this has been interesting. Thanks for watching.